Hey, welcome to Sports Map Houston. I'm Brandon Strange, and for John Granado, you know his co-host Lance Airline from the bench weekday mornings, ESPN 97.5, 92.5. If you haven't yet, please hit subscribe on the channel. We do appreciate it. Hey, Lance, the uh, the John Wall era, it's over in Houston. And uh, as I was sc scrolling through my timeline last night, I realized that it's kind of a complicated legacy that Wall has here in Houston because of how everything played out. And... Um, First, I wanted to ask you, are you surprised that the Rockets, after holding on to him for so long and his contract finally became an expiring contract, that the team released him instead of trying to trade him? No, I think they have tried to trade him, and there's no one there. I mean, the only thing you could do is tra try to see if you could trade him for another, um, another player that you would cut invariably. And and at that point, it's a matter of do you get draft picks for John Wall going over? Do they get draft picks for you, you know, sending John Wall's contract to them? I think it was just a – I think it was a, 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 a zero-sum gain, and I think basically the Houston Rockets said, okay, we're not going to be able to get anything for John Wall. It's unlikely that he plays – he's played 40 games in three years – Everyone knows he's not going to play back-to-back -back type games. I just think there's no value in, in him from a trade standpoint, especially with that contract. The Rockets would have been forced to take on a huge lion's share of that. I think it was basically the Rockets just saying, look, we figured it would come to this. We could take on Russell Westbrook's contract and then cut Russell Westbrook. So why not? We'll, you know, we'll just do the same thing with John Wall and get on with what we're doing. I think adding Jabari Smith through the draft – there is a clear path ahead for the Rockets. They see, okay, we got what we need. Let's just cut bait with all the, you know, with, with this expiring contract, and we're officially turning the page. You used a word that's interesting. You called it the John Wall era. Is it an era? <laughs> Can you have an era if you're here three years and you play 40 games? That's, that's a good question. I think that – it's it's tough because as a as a Rockets fan, if I separate myself from you know the the role I do here, if I separate separate myself as a fan, I look at it. It was kind of cool seeing John Wall and Demarcus Cousins kind of throw some shade at James Harden when he was on his way out the door. Right. And so in in that sense, I kind of do like look fondly on, upon his time here. In that sense, on the other hand. You're right. He didn't play a whole lot, and that makes it more complicated. On As far as the, the trade thing not happening, I wonder, too, how much of it has to do with the logjam they have at the roster because we know the NBA, you have to make the money match. So it's tough to say that you're going to send somebody with a giant contract and to know that you're going to have to take on other contracts back, which, again, like you said, you're probably going to have to cut those guys. I also wonder, too, how much the uncertainty – in Brooklyn played into this as well because we know that uh, we know the Durant situation is volatile. You know he's monitoring the situation in Brooklyn, um, and we know that the rumors were that Houston was trying to send Wall to LA to try to get a draft pick in return for sending Wall there and getting Westbrook back. So I, I wonder how much the Brooklyn situation played into that as well. Yeah, I, I can't imagine it. <clears throat> you know, I think the Rockets right now are just focused on the Rockets. I think there's been a time where they looked at different scenarios and situations. There's no way to tell what's going to happen at you know in in New Jersey right now, or rather in Brooklyn with the Nets. There, there's really no way to know. I mean, you know that Kyrie opted back in. We know that. We don't know what he's going to do this year and how he's going to play. We don't know what's going to happen with Ben Simmons. And we know Kevin Durant can't be excited about the future of the Nets. I think that's definitely a sure thing. So right now, I think the Rockets' best course of action, and I think this is what Rafael Stone is doing, is saying, look, let's do us. Let's not worry about how everything else is going to happen, how it happens. We've got draft picks. We've got swaps available to us. Let's take care of the core that we have right here, right here, right now, and let's focus on growing them into a competitive, aggressive young juggernaut that we can you know, build around and grow around for the years to come. So I think they're just going to do them right now. I think an interesting contrast uh, on this team is Eric Gordon because Gordon's a vet. Mm -hmm. played when his number was called you know he can't love the situation that he's in going from playing meaningful games being in the western conference finals to all of a sudden helping with a rebuild and helping to you know uh, develop young players 
He never tried to force his way out, seemingly, never you know, threatened to sit out because he didn't agree with his role. How much of our opinion about John Wall is colored by the fact that Eric Gordon was right there on the same team handling his business different? Um, I don't <clears throat> I don't look at one player versus the other because I just I see a guy who didn't want to take on a role that the Rockets wanted from him, which is playing off the bench. And he decided and the Rockets decided, OK, well, we just won't play. And I guess I'll just collect this 40 plus million dollars. So to me, John Wall is his own entity. I think what's interesting with Eric Gordon is going to be I don't know that the Rockets were in love with the idea of trading Eric Gordon for another first round draft pick last year. Um, I don't think that was something that they really had in mind. However, I think things could be different this year. I think, you know, using him early in the season as a as a veteran, one of the veterans that they have on the team, we'll see if that makes any difference. It's certainly going to be a different team with Christian Wood off the team. We'll see with Jabari Smith's great legendary work ethic and and hardcore basketball, you know, personality and 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 work ethic, how that fits into it. So Eric Gordon to me is really playing for the trade deadline. Everything he does this year is going to be playing to find a home at the trade deadline. And I think the Rockets are going to be more than happy to accommodate him this year to see if they if they can still get a future first round pick, even if it's a late first rounder for Eric Gordon. Let's hope he plays well early in, early in the year. I think that's great because one of the things we've seen with the Rockets and Rafael Stone is, you know, he's he's been pretty good at, at finding talent all over the first round. So I'll be more than happy for him to to get as many of those picks as possible, at least, you know, while he's still in the building phase. Will we see that money from Wall's contract? Will we see that used next year to bring in a vet uh, to be the centerpiece or, or at least a big part mm -hmm. uh, of this team with a young core? That'll be the question. We'll see what that looks like, but they'll have money available. We know that for sure come next year. Mm -hmm.